This publication hops more into the nuances of psychedelic uh, research in neuroscience. This isn't my area of expertise, but I read this paper and I thought it was very interesting and I want to share it with you. Uh, it's basically suggesting the idea that uh, psychedelic drugs can help neurons grow. The paper starts by going over general depression information. As this is one of the targeted um, debilitating disorders that people can experience in a lifetime. And we're seeing that psychedelics can actually help depression. Uh, depression affects 300 million people worldwide. Uh, current SSRIs like Prozac are moderately effective, but they require daily administration and they take two to four weeks before they start working once you take them. And they have side effects much like most medications. And unfortunately, approximately 33% of patients are unresponsive to these medicines. And let's get into a little bit of the pathology of depression. So depression results in deleterious structural and functional changes in key brain circuits. These include retraction of dendrites, elimination of dendritic spines, and loss of excitatory synapses in the prefrontal cortex. The paper then goes over the possible treatment of depression with um, psychedelic drugs. So I've never heard of this term before, quite interesting enough, psychoplastogens. These are small molecules that promote the rapid regrowth of atrophied cortical dendritic arbors and represent the leading edge of antidepressant neurotherapeutics. And this term, uh, psychoplastogens, basically refers to ketamine, scopalamine, and the serotonergic psychedelics. Uh, these compounds rapidly promote structural and functional neuroplasticity in the cortex and produce long-lasting effects without the need for chronic dosing. And this is really key, that, that chronic dosing part. Um, SSRIs you typically take every day. And the cool thing about psychedelics is that they seem to only have one or two experiences before you can have a long-term uh, positive lasting effect without depression up to about six months to a year, but that there's still research needs to be done on that. So the first experiment these researchers ran to answer the following question, do psychoplastogens stimulate neuronal growth? They did the following. They uh, basically took neurons out of an animal and they collected them and they treated those neurons with either ketamine or LSD for different lengths of time, removed the drug and let the cultures mature to see if in fact the psychoplastogenic drugs like LSD and um, ketamine helped the neuron grow more. And what they found is in fact, yes, if we consider the first picture, this is vehicle treated neuron in which you have the neuron in the middle and the den dendrites coming off of the main cell body in the middle. And then you have ketamine and LSD um, treated neurons. What we notice is there's actually more dendrites coming off of the cell body in the ketamine and LSD um, treated neurons. The researchers first want to figure out what is the shortest amount of time required for neuronal growth if we treat them with 10 micromolar of LSD and independently ketamine. So the way this is set up is we have on the x-axis the time period. Uh, the first one is uh, a quarter of an hour, 15 minutes, one hour, 24 hours, 72 hours. So you basically leave the drug on the neuron for these time periods, then you take the drug off, and you take the measurement after 72 hours to let the neuron uh, fully mature. And then you can measure the number of crossings, which basically the more amount of crossings, the better, because that indicates we have more branching coming off of the, uh, the cell body of the neuron and also branching coming off of the dendrites themselves. So the higher the number, the better. And what we notice is that at 15 minutes, we have a statistically significant effect as well as denoted by the stars um, also, one hour, 24 hours, and 72 hours, all statistically significant. So with LSD, we see basically the same thing. We see the uh, statistical significance occurring at all of the time points, and the peak one is occurring at 24 hours with LSD, whereas one hour with, um, with ketamine. 
And then lastly, they chose to use uh, BDNF as sort of a control. BDNF is called brain-derived uh, neurotropic factors. And these are the normal endogenous compounds that your body naturally uses to help neurons grow. And what's interesting about this is that in the BDNF treated one, the statistical significance occurs at one hour, but with uh, LSD and ketamine, it, it only takes 15 minutes for this to happen. This next set of experiments I thought was very clever on their part. Basically, there are three secondary messenger proteins, and during neuronal growth, these secondary messenger proteins help the neuron grow more, and they are TRKB, uh, AMPA, and mTOR. So basically what they did is they applied a TRKB antagonist called ANA12 um, alongside with the compound LSD and ketamine um, to try and figure out is this TRKB uh, secondary messenger protein important and if we inhibit it, will prevent the neuron from growing. So in this first graph, what we see is basically, yeah, with with ketamine and LSD, when this ANA12, which is the TRKB antagonist, is applied, uh, the stimulation phase, uh, psychoplastogen growth is hindered, which tells us that TRKB is definitely important in the stimulation phase. What about in the growth phase? In the growth phase, what we see is that when ANA12 is applied in the growth phase, the psychoplastogen growth is not hindered telling us that in this case, um, the growth phase, uh, TRKB is not necessarily important for neuronal growth. Overall, it suggests that TRKB is important in the stimulation phase, but not important in the growth phase of a neuron. They run the same experiment for um, AMPA antagonists. So basically, will uh, turning off AMPA receptor, will that hinder the growth of neurons or neuronal crossings? And what we find is that, yes, when DNQX, the AMPA antagonist, is applied in the stimulation phase, the psychoplastin growth is hindered, denoting by the, uh, the red bars that have gone drastically down from the uh, control for ketamine and LSD. On the growth phase, when we apply DNQX, the AMPA antagonist, we can see that the uh, growth phase of uh, psychoplastin growth is also hindered. Um, basically, what this suggests is that AMPA is vital in the stimulation and growth phase in order for neurons to grow. And the final experiment is the same as the past two, where they uh, used an mTOR antagonist to see if inhibiting mTOR would also negate the effects of the psychoplastogenic drugs like LSD and ketamine. And what we see from this is this massive drop-off um, with ketamine and LSD in magenta when we apply the mTOR antagonist uh, RAPA, um, basically indicating that RAPA applied in the stimulation phase with uh, psychoplastogen growth is severely hindered, uh, telling us that um, mTOR is likely very needed for neuronal growth. Um, when we do the same thing in the growth phase, um, we see a, a similar effect. Uh, we see that the drugs, uh, ketamine and LSD, in terms of number of crossings, are inhibited, but not by as large of a factor as uh, when you apply the mTOR antagonist in the stimulation um, phase. So RAPO applied in the growth phase, uh, psychoplastogen growth is hindered, but not as severely as uh, in, when you apply it in the stimulation phase. So this suggests that mTOR is vital in the stimulation and growth phase in terms of um, aiding in the growth of neurons, uh, which, is, which is interesting. And concluding remarks of this paper are that the ability of psychoplastogens to aid in the growth of neurons supports the idea that psychedelics, which are psychoplastogens, um, can help depression. Currently, it is unclear how long these psychoplastogenic effects last, although the uh, work at Johns Hopkins would seem to support the idea that they can last for about six months, but this is not clear cut yet. And lastly, uh, mTOR and AMPA are vital in the stimulation and growth phase of neurons, while TRKB is only important in the stimulation, but not the growth phase.